All right, welcome everybody. Glad to be with you in this webinar. My name is Sol. Um, glad to have you here. It just <laughs> thanks, Mo. Um, just before we get started, if you want uh, for everyone to see what you type, just change your settings on your chat so all attendees and panelists see what you what you type. That way, everyone will see your messages and we can create a conversation. Um, Edwin, thank you. Hi from the Netherlands. Uh, okay, let's get started. We're gonna spend maybe half an hour, forty minutes here together, and I want to I want to tackle and discuss uh, in depth um, a topic that that comes very very recurrently, and a lot of traders, uh, forex traders, but I guess you know all traders suffer from. And more importantly, I'll try to give you some tools to try to fix those those um, those challenges so with that in place and for all of you um, we haven't met or we haven't spoke uh, my name is Sol I'm the senior analyst at the Fiverr's fund we are a online prop company where we uh, fund forex traders so they can manage um, funds and capital from the from the from the fund and then we split the, the profits um, and we try very very hard to deliver a lot of resources and a lot of tools and a lot of webinars and training rooms in order to help our traders to succeed. And here you can see the large list of resources you will get access once you are a trader with the, with the fund. So um, nice to meet you all. And let's just start. And we will start with something that might seem a bit basic, but I will try to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So just hang with me uh, a few minutes and we'll discover some things that might be uh, useful for all of you. Um, as part of what I do here at the fund, I get the opportunity to talk to, um, to, to many of our traders. I hold one-on-one -on -one, um, calls and talks with our, with our traders and I get to hear what are their challenges, what are what they suffer the most from, and what are the, the challenges they're facing. And um, I've spoke to hundreds of traders and I've heard a lot of traders and I've tried to help a lot of traders. And there's two things that traders externalize the most, okay? If you want to guess what are those two symptoms or what are those challenges that I just hear over and over and over again, um, that would be over trading and over leverage. Now, the problem with traders thinking that these are their problems is that overtraining and over leverage, they are just the edge of a much larger problem. These are just the actions, okay? They are, they are like the symptom of the illness that we need to identify. There's something behind this conduct causing traders to eventually uh, get into overtraining or over leveraging. And that's what we want to, to understand because they start the meeting with me and they externalize and they tell me, yeah, I overtraded or I over leveraged and I shouldn't have or, or whatever. And then when we keep uh, digging and, and, and trying to get deeper into what's causing that, then we discover what is really causing and triggering um, these, these conducts. Okay, so I'll try to give you a lot of uh, perspective to to, to this topic, and I'll give you some tools and some tips to try to overcome this, this symptom, okay? Um, because as we said, they are not the, the problem itself, they are just the final action, okay? The, the final conduct of our deeper problem. So let's start with that, okay? Before we um, move on, I'll, I'll, I just want to show you some examples of charts from, you know, from some of our traders, and every chart tells a story, okay? So for example, I'll just, I want my, hey, so we have um, um, a chart here. Let's look at this one, for example. And this is a 80, 80K account, meaning this is a trader who already passed uh, successfully the first level, okay? This is a level two account. And we can see uh, very small profits, very small profit, very small profit, very small profits. And suddenly, uh, after a while, uh, a huge stop that ends uh, stopping up that stopping out the, the account. Okay, so this is a clear uh, over leverage or over or revenge trading or over trading that caused it to this. 
okay? Uh, what is it? I don't know. Maybe a lack of lack of patience, and the, the trader um, was waiting, was feeling in, impatient and wanted to profit quickly, or something that uh, ended up, you know, taking big losses. Um, something similar here, okay? A level two account, a 10k account. Um, you can see here the the dot line is the equity line versus the balance line. So you can see over these little gains, there was a huge drawdown on the equity, okay? Uh, even if after closing the trade, the balance was positive, he was taking a lot of, this trader was taking a lot of um, drawdown in order to get small profits. And getting discipline enough in order to maintain a strategy that it's giving you and taking so long in order to give you results, that might be frustrating, for example, that, that might trigger some emotions that ends up um, wanting the trader to get um, bigger bigger results or bigger returns, open it up a trade that eventually was a, a big loss that you can see here. And then maybe, you know, the rest is history. He wants to recover fast or he wants to revenge trading or something. And, uh, you know, he blows the account. Um, same here, we can see a nice, uh, a nice balance, but you can see also the equity, how it's in drawdown a, a lot of time. And look how close was this trader to the target, to get to, to the target. He was just a, a few hundred dollars away from the target. Uh, maybe at this point, he or she felt uh, overconfident, for example. Okay, he were overconfident. He wanted to get to the target as quickly as possible. And that was a big loss. He wanted to recover that, that big loss quickly. And you can see the rest of the chart. Something similar here. Okay, we can we can get our thoughts about it, but it's something similar. Um, some, something here, you know, a trader who's in drawdown and recovers from drawdown, drawdown, recovers from drawdown, he's doing fine. He wants to get quickly to the target, uh, opens up a big, um, a, a bigger or increases lot size and big loss, okay? Or same here, this looks, looks to me like a martingale system or something, but um, you know, many small profits, big loss. Uh, many small profits, big loss, big win. Okay, overconfidence. I want to get quickly to the target. Bigger, uh, 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 bigger trade, big loss, and stop out. Okay, so every chart has a story behind it, but you can see clearly um, different causes or different triggers. Might be an emotion, might be an expectation, might be lack of discipline, lack of consistency, lack of um, trust in the system. Um, uh, greed, maybe overconfidence that they uh, lately or eventually cause or trigger either over leverage or um, over trading that leads to uh, losing, losing the account. Okay, so let's move on with that, with those thoughts. So let's talk about uh, possible cause causing over trading or over leverage, which is unrealistic expectations. And if we go to explore that. Uh, a little bit more. Let me just go back a little bit. Okay. Um, unrealistic expectations, I think of those in three aspects. Okay. Ex unrealistic expectations about uh, success, about results, and about time. Okay. So well, let's start with success. Um, first, as human, we think of success, or we might be entering the training world uh, thinking of success in a linear way, when we ju will just uh, improve, 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 improve. I mean, eventually we will get to the top of our career or, or our skill or our training um, uh, career. When in trading, um, success really looks like this, okay? It's a very hard way and very long way, um, partially because we as humans are, um, are used to do some action and getting some result of that action. Okay, so if I, if I, I don't know, if I like mathematics, so two plus two is always four. If I play an instrument, so every time I play the piano, certain note or something, it's always the same note, always same sound. And and here in trading, sometimes we think we're doing the same action. Okay, we're following our system, our strategy. We have a signal in our strategy and we don't get the same results. Sometimes those trades result in a win, sometimes results in a, in, a, in a loss. So it's very hard to measure success or progress when we don't have um, that feedback or positive feedback 
from the market. Okay, so our um, expectation about what success should be in the market it's very uh, different from what we experience in life. Okay, we feel that we're not progressing. So here at the Fivers, and I we speak a lot of, uh, about that, and I and I agree with that. Uh, we speak about uh, shades of success. Okay, we when we talk about success, we really think success is a constant progress. Okay, it's a it's a a, a, a constant progress towards uh, a better trading every time. Okay, and I would like to give you the first uh, tool for this webinar. Of course, at the at the um, at the recording, you will have it on the the YouTube channel. But here you have a quick blog post we we wrote about it where we need to how to define what success for every one of us and we need to uh, be aware that we improve every time and constantly okay the 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 fact that we all have different backgrounds different uh, account sizes different skills different time avail availability so it's a it's a very different uh, path that every trader has to go through and you need to be and start measuring your, yourself against yourself. So you, you need to start comparing yourself to your, to your past self <laughs> and then to see if you have made any progress or not. Okay, so you need to be your own benchmark. I think that's the, that's the, the thought that you need to stop comparing yourself to others and you need to start comparing yourself to your results from, I don't know, 100 trades ago or one month ago or one year ago. Are you a better trader or a worse trader? Okay, and you need to acknowledge that progress. So that's very, very important. When we think about success, it's very relative in trading. If you were a losing trader and now you are a break-even trading, so that's kind of success. Of course, if you're a break-even trader and then you get to to consistent trader, that's better. And from consistency to profitability, that's even even better. But that will take time. Okay. Now, when we think of results, um. Of course, there's the money and there's the returns, and we need to think about what's realistic. Okay, um, what's our what's our uh, account size and what we can get from that? Uh, we cannot expect from a very small account to get a lot of money. Okay, that's something just not realistic. You already know that, so we need to think about our uh, outcome results in a realistic way. Okay, and not not thinking of trading as a as a profession that can give you millions of dollars uh, uh, very quickly or with a small account because just that's just not realistic and same time with same thing with time you might hear uh, when we think when we think of um, a career university a degree um, we need to invest years of our life in order to get professional at some uh, at some at something okay and for some reason on trading we want to get immediate returns and immediate success um, and we need to remember that trading will require years of preparation. So you need to you need to uh, commit time. Okay, you uh, you might have heard of the 10, uh, 10 thousand hours to get um, uh, to master some some skill. So maybe you need to get ten thousand trades in the market to get you know professional at it. And of course, you need to um, take into account your available time. Um, you may have another job, so you have to trade off the um, larger time frames, and you will have less setups and less, less opportunities. And if you have time time available to practice, so um, you will have more available time for practicing, and maybe your your um, your path will be shorter. Okay, but again, we need to understand what what's our reality and then what's our available time for practicing to to, to commit time into trading, and we cannot expect to get uh, successful in trading in less than six months, one year, two years, okay? Anyone who, who offers that to you, you know, it's very unrealistic. So let's go back to, um, to our presentation. So that might be one source, okay? Causing over leverage or over trading because um, suddenly what we thought about trading, giving us a lot of uh, money is not getting there. And we start over trading on over leveraging to get those big outcomes we thought trading would give us and uh, and we start with this okay and we get um, disappointed um another thing that i we we see and and i talk to a lot of traders they have the wrong focus okay um, they focus a lot of 
in the outcome instead of focusing in the process. They, they cannot distinguish between lock strikes they had um, and consistently. So they have a lot of weight and they give a lot of weight to um, good trades or, or profitable trades that they had here and then instead of trying to get consistent over time. And I don't know if you, if you saw the, the Moneyball the movie, guys. I don't know if you saw it. But if you haven't, just go and watch it. It's a very good movie. And you can see there how they are trying to recruit baseball, um, baseball athletes, baseball players, based on their statistics, on their consistency. Okay? So we need to really focus on our, on our process instead of focusing on the outcome. Because if we focus on the outcome of trading, on the money, we will focus on over leverage. We want to take the one single trade that makes a lot of money instead of trying to focus on the process, on developing the skills and the consistency um, that eventually will give us outcome. Okay, But the focus has to be in a good process, not on the outcome. And, and surrounded and all the way, okay, we have emotions involved. So at every stage, okay, we have a correlation um, of emotions being involved here. Uh, we fear, uh, we fear frustration. So we might uh, revenge trade. We fear greed. Okay. So we might over leverage. We might fear um, fear. Uh, we might fear um, a lot of. Uh, I don't know. We we might fear fearless. Okay. We might feel fearless. So we go and over leverage, over trade, and our emotions are involved during the whole process and we need to acknowledge those ones as well. So for all that, um, let's try to find some solutions to that, okay? Um, so what we need is to basically to, to get to an integral solution. We need to break this uh, vicious cycle and start developing good habits. Uh, when, when we try to um, when, we can, when we want to change bad habits, we have to have something in place in order to replace those ones. Okay, So unless we develop good habits, we will have no chance to just erase or delete our bad habits. So we have to get, have the good ones in place in order to replace the bad ones. Okay, So let's start with some ideas. Um, there's, there's no more important or less important here. The most important thing is to take one of these ideas and start today with, with one of those. Um, go, go back later and watch the recording. And, and, and once you have one of those checked, then you can take another one of the, these good habits and start developing as, as well. And once you have all these habits we're going, we're going to cover right now, you will be able to, um, to get rid of your bad habits and you will have some progression, okay? A shade of success, some success, in order to become a better trader. So the most important thing is to choose one of the ideas I will throw you now and start with that one, okay? And then just continue picking a new one and continuing with that, okay? So let's just start. Um, a good idea for, in, for improving your trading is to, reducing, to reduce your lot size. And I have, I, I have um, I, I've told you in some webinars some, or talking to some traders, I have, I have gone in depth to this idea. If you were risking just one single dollar in every one of your trades and you lose the trade, that one dollar, you wouldn't feel the need to revenge trade in order to, um, to make back that dollar, okay? One dollar would not be a painful loss for you, okay? So that wouldn't trigger in you the need to over trade or to over leverage in order to make that, that one dollar. Of course, this is just, just an analogy. But, but the best thing to, the best way in order to develop consistency and to not focus on the outcome, but focusing on the process is to really reduce your lot size, to start to focus on improving your statistics, your ratios, your win ratio, your, uh, your, um, your risk reward ratio. And once th those are positive, then you can start increasing your lot size in order to get um, outcome, in order to get money of your good process, but you need to, you, you really need to reduce your lot size so you don't get emotionally attached to any one of your single trades. So that would be um, a good exercise to do. If you feel that many times you are over leveraging or over trading, that, that, that might help um, to, with that, okay? Um, 
on realistic expectations. Why not developing a trading plan? Uh, but a trading plan is not it's not only writing down your strategy. Okay, writing down your strategy is super important. It has to be like your 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 map to follow. But a trading plan has to include what are your expectations and what are your expectations based off your own situation. What's the time you have ability? What's what are your own life objectives and life the lifestyle you want to live? What income you need? So for that income, what kind of um, a large account size you need in order to make that in a consistent way? So you really need to have um, a, a, a real and a, a complete trading plan in place. And you have to have the discipline in order to follow it so you don't go thinking of trading in an unrealistic way. So I'll give you another tool for that. If you don't have a trading plan in place you, and you don't have one, let me give you one here. It's a short version of, of, a, of a very complete trading plan we have. So if you follow, if you fill in your, your email in this link that I just gave you, you will get to your email. Um, a version, uh, a reduced version of a trading plan that, you, that, that that will help you start with something, okay? But it's very, very important. I think uh, traders and especially, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if especially Forex traders, but traders, they really think they can just get into the market, out of the market, and they don't follow um, a plan. They don't follow something written down. And it's very, very, very important. I cannot stress that, you know, so make yourself, <laughs> do yourself a favor and start writing down things and journalizing uh, your, your training routines, okay? Um, we spoke about focusing on the process and not focusing on the outcome. You really need to be your own uh, benchmark. You need to improve every day, every week, every month, every 10 trades, every 100 trades. Uh, you need to honestly put yourself in a, in a starting line and after one month to compare yourself, compare your ratios, compare your results, and then look at what you have to tune in your strategy on in yourself, your emotions. And if you had a um, break-even month after a losing month, that's progress, correct? And if afterwards you have a, a slightly better risk-to-war ratio than the previous month, that's also progress. You need to acknowledge that. And you need to stop uh, comparing your results uh, against other traders because we, have, we are all different worlds with different skills, different time, different, um, I don't know, family, whatever, okay? Uh, depths or, or not depths. So we all have different um, lives and we need to compare, uh, uh, we need to compare to ourselves all the time. Um, of course, doing that slowly will achieve, you will slowly achieve consistently. That's like the goal and the money will follow, okay? And just focus on, the process on taking good trades, following your trading plan, following your strategy. Uh, remember that even if when you um, even when you follow your strategy, you will have good trades that will end up losing money. But that's fine because you're focusing on the process and not the outcome of the trade. So as long as you made did your job and took the trade you needed, the outcome it's something that the market will decide. Okay, you have no control over that. So focus on taking good process, taking good trades. Um, backtest, okay? Maybe you're just starting now. I don't know, you know, the background of all of all of you guys, but you need to be you need to be able to trust your strategy. And in order for do that, you need to first backtest it to to see if there's some potential in that strategy. Then adapt it, tune it to yourself, and then um, forward test, okay? A real test that strategy, uh, not not to make money, but to get trust in your strategy to know that in the long run your strategy. It makes money. So if your strategy is working, working, it's a it has a potential of it's a profitable um, strategy. Then you only have to work on the other side of the system, which is the trader, which is you. Okay. So we have in a system we have uh, a, a trader, and we have uh, we have the trader, and we have the strategy. So back testing and forward testing, we can have no emotions, uh, no emotions in place in order to. Uh, make sure our strategy works for us. And once we know that, then we can trust it. And the trader part of the equation of the system uh, can feel more comfortable taking those trades and those signals and uh, will be easier. So uh, backtest it, demo trade, and then forward trade and get trust in your strategy. Okay, Build confidence in your strategy. Find a mentor or a community to stay accountable to. Okay, The, 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 the key, you know, from all this, 
talks and meetings I have to the to with these traders, with all the traders, hundreds of traders, the most valuable thing here is to externalize their thoughts. Okay, the, once you hear yourself thinking or or saying what you think or saying what you think is your problem, and you stay accountable to someone, okay, because we many times I have follow up meetings to someone, so they know right now they have to stay accountable to me. Okay, but when you go to the gym or when you go to a nutrition or something, and you know you will meet your coach or your mentor or your group or whatever the next week or in two weeks, you know you have a compromise. Okay, so you need to find a mentor or a community to stay accountable. There are plenty of forums. We have um, a trade ideas page where you can try to find a match or a friend or something to be your mate. And and, and the, the key the key message here is to stay accountable to someone that will help you with the discipline, okay? Once you have a, to take a, a trade or not to take a trade and you know you should not take the trade, once you think you will have to explain that to someone else in the future, you won't take the trade, you shouldn't, okay? So it's very, very important you find a community or a mentor to stay accountable to. That will help you with the, with the discipline. Um, meditate, I don't know if you connect with that. You don't have to go to mindfulness or, or any specific thing, but just breathe okay that's that's the key uh, relax your mind uh, breathe before your trading session breathe during your trading session breathe uh, after the trading session okay keep your mind relaxed so you don't have uh, so so you don't have to uh, that, that will help you with the emotions okay trying to trying to trigger in that will help you a lot um, uh, i was very skeptical of this until i tried it you know i heard i heard of uh, ray dalio ray dalio um, saying that he he started meditating. So if Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio and all of those big traders, they, they, they meditate constantly. So why shouldn't I? So I started and I really connected to this. I don't do you know long meditations, but just a few minutes of, of breathe, okay? Exercises before my trading has really helped me out. Um, maybe last, um, it's hard. I know it's hard, it's part of our lives but you need to drop social media, especially you need to, to stop social media when you see, you know, flash fancy cars and, and traders showing um, profit months of $100,000, you know, that, that's something that's, again, unrealistic. Um, most of those are fake. Uh, most of, you know, YouTube videos or TikTok videos or whatever, they're just looking for for SEO and they're looking for traffic into the channels to get revenues from, from the from YouTube or TikTok or, or whatever, um, and 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 those really cause you to 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 think you can get those same results. And again, we don't know even if they're real. Their strategy or their system might not be the one you need. So you really need to, or you guys re really need to stop um, creating or or comparing yourself to what you see on social media. That only causes a lot of stress. And again, uh, going back to compare yourself to, okay, to yourself. You are your own benchmark. Um, I'll take if there's some question, guys. I will be glad to to take that. Um, uh, I, again, the message here is to um, start developing good habits in order to get rid of the bad habits. Shulani, does the fibers have a trading community? We have a lot of channels when you can create a um, community or a mate or something. We have a trade ideas page where you can find traders that maybe trade like you, and you can contact them. We have a um, we have a um, a Facebook uh, page when you can throw ideas and and get some feedback or find someone who's willing to get into a Telegram or or, or, or WhatsApp group or something. So we are we are trying all the time to get um, to create a community of, community of traders, and we have some projects in mind that will be very disruptive to the industry. So I'm really, we're really working hard to, to get that in place. Um, so yes, I would like to think of the Fivers uh, as a community of traders. Edwin Jensen, how do, you ha how do you handle emotions during a trading session? How do you detect them and how do you cope with them? Are emotions always bad during trading or not? Uh, those have a mentor coach we can talk to. Uh, yeah, John, if you join the Fivers, you can get, um, with a portfolio analyst is uh, sometimes it's me. There are other guys here that do those those talks, and you can you can have some help with that. 
the slide before, of course, let me go back one slide, okay, so you have it. Uh, handling emotions, again, ideally, we do have this emotion and we have to, we have to recognize them and acknowledge those, but we have to have a plan of, of what to do once we detect those emotions. So ideally, you have a, a trading strategy or a trading plan where you feel comfortable so the emotions or the need to, su to do something is not triggered. Uh, and once you, and in your trading plan has to, you have to have um, that, that path, okay, or well, that plan. If I take a trade and I feel uncomfortable, then I will close. Or if I feel, um, if I'm feeling overconfident, I will stay out of, of, of my computer. Or, okay, you, you, you have like a, like a map to follow once you identify those those strategies uh, those emotions uh, it's not something we cannot erase our emotions we're humans and we have the emotions but certain circumstances in the market trigger certain emotions uh, which are different in, 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 in all of us so we i don't have a clear answer to give to you because my emotions are different to yours but once you feel that emotions write it down and for the next time uh, decide what are you going to do once you feel that same emotion in place, okay? Um, emotions, they are not always bad in trading, but again, we don't want our emotions to get, to interfere to our trading. So we have to have a plan, an emotion and a plan for our trading routine and our trading session, okay? Is realistic to reach the 6% target when I risk only half a percent per trade? Of course, we have, we have many traders um, risking less than that, risking less than half percent per trade, and they get to the target. Uh, if you have a, a, a good risk reward ratio, then one trade would give you more than one percent of profit, and you would be in the, on your way to the six percent. Uh, and if if I was asking you to make that six percent in two weeks, maybe that was unrealistic. But that's why we have, uh, you know, we we try to not pressure our traders. And when you you have six months to get into the target. And if you need more time, just request it and we'll give you more, okay? As long as you're profitable, we don't want um, you know, to put pressure on our traders. Yeah, it really is an, an, an invitation to research your emotions. There are plenty of books, you know, trading in the, book, trading in the zone, um, ma um, markets, mar 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 uh, what's the name? Market games. Oh, I'll, I'll throw that in the description. There's a lot of uh, books on emotions. It's very... Uh, helpful to read. Uh, Gulden, how can we understand we are over trading? <laughs> Backwards, you can see your chart. Okay, I show you the, ch the charts, how they, how they look. In real time, I guess you will, uh, the problem is not realizing you are over trading. The problem is to stop. <laughs> it, many times it's too late to, uh, once you realize you're over trading and you, you stop, that's too late. The, the damage is done. So the first time that happens to you, that's fine. Um, just just remember that and write that down and commit to not do that mistake again, okay? Uh, all bike riders will fall off the bike at some times. All traders will blow accounts at some point. That has to be uh, a lection and uh, something you get message of and, and um, something you learn, okay? So you learn of. Uh, Manu, can I give features for a good entry point? No, I, it's not. It, it really depends on the strategy and the, the system you're following. Uh, it's not something I can give you. I know for my strategy, what's a good or bad entry point, but it's something that will depend on your strategy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Leon. Uh, market. Uh, yeah. Market minds game. That's the, that's the one I was looking for. Uh, market wizards. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. How do we access our progress chart to the fibers? You have, if you go here, so you have the dashboard and you go to your to your um, to your chart, okay, guys. Has been a pleasure. Um, for almost forty minutes here with you, spending this time with you. Um, you know, if you have any question, you know how to reach out to us. Send us an email. Uh, Samuel, what's your question? Maybe I, I I missed it. Okay, just leave it here again. I I guess I missed it. But if you re retype it, I I will. Um, time frame for consistent in trading. Again, same old, some, it's something very individual. There's no, there's no better or worse uh, time frame. Uh, my advice is if you have less time in front of the chart, go to the larger time frames. If you have a lot of time to spend in, in front of the charts, then you can go to lower time frames. But uh, the, 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 the market 
market behavior is timeless, okay? Time frame is something we, we know from our trading platforms. The market does not respond to those time frames. So the, the time frame is really not the, the, the issue here, okay? You can get consistent at all time frames. You need to find the one you feel comfortable with, okay? And that suits your, um, that suits your, your lifestyle. Uh, Audrey, yeah, you can feel free to email Fivers if we if you need more uh, more time on your evaluation, just do that. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, we'll get the, the the YouTube recording and you'll have the resources there as well. Um, as always, happy trading and see you next week. Bye bye, guys. Thank you.